Wow, that's quite the group there. I'm going to be talking today a bit about how data is changing things, but I'm also going to be talking about a fundamental, you could call it topological, morphological change in which the internet is turning upside down. I work for MAPR. We've made some pretty cool announcements over the last few months, uh, a container preparation for big data so that you can run ordinary programs. You don't have to be moving data off of a cluster and back on to do this. You can run conventional machine learning directly against the cluster. We've made announcements about supporting microservices. And today what I'm going to be talking about is how the internet is turning upside down and how the announcement that we made Tuesday ties right into that. I'm going to go geeky here. Uh, you can tell these aren't the glitzy sort of slides. So the internet as it's shaped now is fundamentally driven by just a few economic parameters. Parameters include the fact that there are billions of people who want to connect to Netflix or whatever, and the fact that servers cost less per bit when they get a little bit larger, or when you scale them. Also governed by the fact that the internet has a bit of a conservative nature. If you put a bit in one place, it's supposed to come out some other place. Conservation of bits there. And that has shaped the internet as we see it, the consumer internet. There are a small number of large servers over on the left and a very large number of consumers over on the right. And because of the inefficiency of connecting that last mile, all of those wires, the total amount of money is big on the consumer side. But because of the necessary concentration in order to be able to build a few servers that drive all that consumed data, the dollar density is high on the left. Now, these are lessons that we've learned over a period of years and we can now apply that as the internet turns upside down. I'll explain why the internet will turn upside down, but it is turning upside down, and we can say every one of those lessons backwards. Now, some are uncharged, so when we turn them backwards, they sound the same, but a lot of them are backwards. So the internet, as it's turning upside down, has machines on the left, but otherwise looks just the same, just backwards the last mile problem becomes the first mile problem. We have billions of machines. Yeah, a quick vote here. Anybody here have a phone? Yeah, come on, you could do it. I'm pretty sure most of you do. Anybody here have two phones? The machines win. They outnumber us even in this room. Now, the total dollars is large on that side, but the dollar density is high on the right. That means business margins will be large. And that high dollar density on the right means that this is the key marketplace if you want to drive leverage for building this. And that's what we're going to talk about here and what we're doing. Now, the reason that this has changed is because things like all the valves and pipes there have sensors. Uh, an airplane engine costs 20% more if it comes with a data plan. Wind turbines measure the wind. The wind is measured by weather stations to predict how the turbines are going to be done. Ordinary generators like these, these water turbines are exquisitely measured. And then at the point of consumption, this is out in Big Basin, out in the Redwoods in the middle of a hike, we found a smart meter. I have no idea who was consuming the electricity or why it was being measured and sent back. Uh, one of our partners is building 3G networks that go onto ships so that every container can phone home. Uh, we talked about phones already. Every one of those reports home. The towers have edge computing in them. Cars do. So it's things emitting data that is changing the nature of the Internet. What can we do? Well... MAPR builds a data fabric that allows planetary scale data analysis. It allows you to build data structures that are truly earth-spanning. 
You can build systems that cross clouds, cross data centers, that work as a single data object, that cross into all of that, that allow us to separate concerns. Application developers can think of data going into a stream and coming out on the other side, but administrators can break that stream across continents. We can have regional data centers. We can have core data centers. We can separate the concerns. If everybody worries about everything, nothing can get done. You can act locally and learn globally. You can have regional centers that measure things, have that single data construct also be present in a central data center where you can do machine learning, and then you can push models back out to the edge where action can happen locally. It's the same fabric all the way down. It has certain constants, certain requirements, location awareness, strong local consistency, things like that. And so this week we're announcing convergence of this to the edge. We're announcing map our edge. These are the small dots here. It's small node clusters, very small. There's one on this stage, a, an entire cluster. It extends things into factories, into oil rigs, into hospitals. You can build medical device monitoring and data motion systems very, very easily. Where the data moves cleanly, you can build connected car applications. We have multiple partners doing that. And it makes it easy. Now, before we get into that, I just wanted to point out that these things are so small. I mean, I've got a server in my pocket. That didn't used to happen. Uh, even with the baggy pants that I often wear, uh, it wouldn't normally fit. So let's see, there's a cluster right over there, and I've got things spread around on stage and, and elsewhere. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what's happening. Let's flip over to the other display. And uh, are we, there we are. So this is just a graph. But what's happening here is we have these vibration sensors, and we can vibrate a little bit. Uh, we have a bit of a size there. There's some sensing going on there. We can uh, redo this display, size it up again. We have sensors over there. We can measure vibration here in the middle. These are things, very small devices, just a few dollars talking to an edge cluster, talking to a very small internet. That's the example that we have here. If we flip back here to the slides, what I'd like to invite you to do is engage with us. Come by the MAMPAR booth. We don't have much time here to answer questions. It's also even difficult to see you guys. But come by. I'm going to be giving another talk that's much more technical today at 420. We have a number of other talks happening in the booth. And we have these clusters running in the booth. You can see how it works. You can see what they can do. That cluster over there with the three nodes can handle 10 million inserts per second. It's an extraordinary revolution in what we can do and how we can do it. So come talk to us. Thank you very much.